So guys, it's just an impromptu video. A lot of you are concerned about delisting with Neo, Alibaba, Tencent, other Chinese stocks. So I want to take the time in this video to kind of clarify a few things and give you my perspective on all of this delisting fears. Specifically, first I want to talk about what is actually going on. I'm going to give you the details on that. Secondly, I will share my personal Chinese investments and what my strategy or plan is going forward with this. And finally, we'll discuss should you sell your Chinese stocks? Should you also avoid investing in Chinese stocks? We're going to talk about that as well. Guys, smash that like button down below. And if you have not joined our 70,000 plus community here, hit that subscribe button. Become part of the community. We have tons of content, videos pretty much every day, so you don't want to miss out. So firstly, what is really going on here? Let's talk about this. Well, if you didn't already catch it, Neo actually yesterday announced a record quarter with their deliveries. And you know what happens when they post a new record, right? The stock posts massive gains. Oh, wait, what? That did not happen with Neo. The stock was down over 10%. Okay, this must have been a fluke. What about Xping? Nope, no gains here either. Also down 10%. What about Candy? This one's a new player in the block, another Chinese EV company. Oh my gosh, down over 12% in a single day. So it's clear there's a lot of selling going on with these Chinese stocks, EV stocks that are in China. There's a lot of concern, there's a lot of fear. We need to talk about this. Okay, so here's pretty much the rundown. These stocks, you know, like Neo, Alibaba, Xpeng, any stock that operates out of China, they are listed on the US exchanges so that, you know, investors like yourself, like me, were able to purchase these stocks on platforms like Robinhood, E-Trade, TD Ameritrade, Webull, doesn't really matter. Once the stock is listed in the US, the American platforms are able to purchase that stock. But at the same time, because these companies operate in China, not in the US, they are able to go through some hoops and avoid a lot of the regulation scrutiny that American businesses have to go through. When companies like Tesla, Netflix, Salesforce, then they report their earnings, you bet that there is a lot of eyes on those numbers, the fact check those numbers, make sure they're accurate, make sure they're factual, make sure they're not lies. So that in turn allows investors like us to be more confident and put our money into these stocks, knowing that the numbers that they report are for the most part accurate. Now, occasionally you do get companies that fall through the cracks or even in the US, Nikola, perfect example. And this is why I have a big concern with SPACs because they're able to kind of avoid that IPO process, which is typically very rigorous and you know, they deep dive into their financials. SPACs, they kind of dodge that bullet there and then go public. So. I, kind of a public service announcement, guys. Just be cautious with your SPACs. Look into their numbers. See if they actually do make sense to you because some of them, like Nikola, could be fabricating things. So because of that, I wouldn't really say it's a Chinese stock issue specifically that we're seeing right now with this delisting fear, but it's pretty much the fact that, that there's no regulation, there's not much scrutiny, there's not much auditing done, and, and that's where I think investors get hurt. The bottom line is that all these regulations and what the SEC does helps investors invest in companies without having to worry about the company lying about their financials. But now specifically talking about Chinese companies, you know, the biggest thing that comes up is a luck in coffee. They recently were caught <laughs> fabricating numbers uh, to the extent that like, I don't even know how they got away with it. It pretty much ran all the way up to upper management. They were all lying about the numbers. Everyone was pretty much in on it and the stock ended up getting hurt badly and then ended up getting delisted from the US main exchange. It's now an over-the-counter stock. But guys, if I'm being honest, luck and coffee was not the norm. It's uh, an exception really to the case, similar to how Nikola is an exception to the case. So I wouldn't really say that all these other Chinese giants, you know, Alibaba, Tencent, JD, even Neo is really in that same bucket, but it does raise concern, right? Like if a company can say that they're that large and they have that much reach and their financials are that big, how can they get away with it for so long, take investors' money here from the US, and essentially at the end of the day, the investors are the ones that get screwed over. Now, I personally think that, you know, large companies like the ones I just listed are probably okay, you know, for the most part at least, and you know, even if they are fabricating a little bit of their numbers here and there to kind of make it look a little bit better, I think for the most part, and this is just my opinion, that their numbers are fairly accurate. Now this goes for, you know, the big names, Alibaba, JD, 
maybe even Baidu and Tencent and maybe even in Neo stock. So now because of all these concerns guys, you know, especially what happened with Luck and Coffee, investors are rightfully so worried about these sort of investments and now regulators in the US are like, you know what, we gotta take a stand on this, we can't just let this keep going on, we can't just let all these Chinese companies lie about things, get listed in the US, take investors money here from the US, we gotta put an end to this and that's kind of where all this delisting fear starts coming up. Now I think the issue and the fear that investors are seeing are also kind of a step further than this. I think that you know investors are seeing this as a possible reignition of the tensions between US and China. That's kind of been on the back burner now because of the global issue. But if this bill passes and it has a very high chance of doing so, there's definitely gonna be a lot of attention, a spotlight again on both US and China and there could be tensions that start up once again because of this. All of that adds to uncertainty, all of that adds to fear, and at the end of the day, those are things investors hate to see. So as a result, naturally investors are like, you know what, I've made X amount of percentage gains here in a short amount of time on these stocks, like NEO, so I'm gonna take my profits, I'm gonna sell out, and that's exactly what we're seeing happen right now. So now guys, let me share my personal Chinese investments. So if you've been following the channel for a little while, you know that I've previously invested in Chinese companies and quite largely as well. And if you go back to my videos, you know, 2018, 2000, maybe even 2019, there were a few videos that I talked about Alibaba, Tencent, JD. I actually like these Chinese stocks and the numbers from what they reported looked very strong. The companies had massive growth potential, China's a growing market, those are not secrets. But the thing is, you know, with everything that I read, you know, doing more research on these companies, it got me a bit more concerned about the factuality behind all of these things they report. And guys, I like to sleep well with my investments. I don't want to worry about it on a day-to-day -day basis, which is why I actually chose to close out those large positions in stocks like Alibaba. So as of today, I don't hold any of the large companies in China. The only one I do hold still is Neo. And the only reason I'm still holding Neo is because it's done so well for me. It's a stock that I use as my Tesla hedge. It's such a small position in my portfolio. I really don't have much to lose in this stock, so I'm just gonna let it ride, see what happens, and just enjoy that roller coaster. So that's kind of where I stand with Chinese stocks and Chinese investments right now. I don't hold any of the large companies. The only one I do hold is Neo. So guys, this brings us to our third topic of discussion. Should you sell your Chinese stocks and avoid investing in these names? Well, here's my honest opinion. I'm not a financial advisor, so keep that in mind. I think that if this bill passes to delist these Chinese stocks, there'll be ample time for these companies to comply and stay listed in the US. In fact, the bill here states that they will have three years to do this and you know remain listed, so this isn't something that's gonna happen overnight, guys. From a personal perspective, I think it's time that America takes a stand on this, and if American companies have to go through massive scrutiny to get listed, I think that any foreign company, Chinese or not, should also go through the same regulations, the same hurdles, the same scrutiny, because at the end of the day, that helps protect investors, and that helps keep companies honest. I think over the long term, you know, if this bill passes and things get tougher for Chinese companies and other foreign companies, it will be a good thing for these stocks because it will give confidence to large investors, to big hedge funds, to big money, to actually invest in these companies and not worry about whether they're fabricating numbers, if the financials are fake or true. Those concerns will be pretty much reduced to the point where it's like any other US company and that'll help these businesses long term. Just remember at the end of the day, the stock market is irrational, but the stock market is investors, it's people. So the SEC here, is trying to make sure that people put their money into stocks aren't getting ripped off because the company is a fraud. Now, if you hold Chinese stocks today, I don't think there's any reason to really panic sell. Like I said, there's ample time for these companies to say they're gonna comply, but I think in the short term, you probably will see some volatility because there will be fear, there will be emotions that come in and investors are gonna act on those emotions and panic sell their stocks. That could be a buying opportunity if you still believe in these companies, like I said, I personally am probably gonna stay away. Who knows, I may change my mind on that, but as of right now, probably staying away from it. But if you have high conviction, you actually believe you know, Alibaba, JD, Neo, these companies actually are reporting on true financials, then it could be a buying opportunity, guys. 
So really what I'm trying to say is I don't think that avoiding these stocks because of delisting fears for the sole reason of delisting fears makes sense. Probably missing on a big opportunity here if these businesses are ones that you actually love, understand, and follow on a regular basis. So just keep that in mind. There is always irrationality when it comes to these sort of things in the market. So you've got to you know, step outside of that, look at it from a high level view, and understand for yourself, are these concerns that will really make a difference? Are these concerns that will really impact my investments? And how likely are these fears actually able to come to fruition? But at the same time, guys, I would not really worry here because if you are, you know, stressed out about this, there are tons of other companies in the US that you can buy that are legit US companies that don't have these sort of hurdles and fears around them. There's no point worrying about, you know, your investments on the basis of, oh, are they reporting actual numbers? Are they lying to us here? I don't know. Investing is supposed to be, you know, to help you with financial freedom, not cause you more stress with your finances. So just keep that in mind. Thousands and thousands of US businesses to invest in if you choose to go that route. That's kind of the route that I've focused on for the most part. And just remember, at the end of the day, we're all in this to make money. So we want to keep these companies honest and we want these sort of regulations to be enforced on any company, Chinese or not. So guys, tonight, Wednesday night, is the vote and we should see some volatility after this passes one way or another, I think. The House will vote and this will affect companies directly like Alibaba, Tencent, and of course, NIO. From what I see right now, the market is already pricing in that this is going to pass. The market is already pricing in that, you know, this is a reality. These stocks are going to have to comply or get delisted. And that's why we're seeing such a big sell off in these stocks. So we may see some continued selling tomorrow and the days to follow. But I think for the most part, a lot of the fear has already kind of set in. And after tonight, that uncertainty is going to become certainty. We'll know what's happening. And then we can start to figure out whether these companies are actually going to comply or choose to get delisted. If you're asking me, I think it's in their best interest to stay listed in the US. There's a lot of money, like I said, on the sidelines that can flood into these stocks when they become more legit companies. So at the end of the day, I think it'll work out for investors. I think it'll work out for these companies. I think it'll be fine. It's gonna add a lot more attention on US and China in the short term, but hey, could be a great buying opportunity long term. So guys, don't panic. Neo, I, I don't think it's going to get delisted. To be honest, if I'm, you know, being 100% honest, I may not be the biggest bull on Neo stock, but I am realistic when it comes to these things. And I think that delisting fears just kind of got blown out of proportion. It just made headlines. You know, it, it's a great title. It gets people to click. So that it is what it is. And I think that smart investors like yourself should be able to step back, see it for what it is, take advantage of the opportunities and benefit from it long term. Either way, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section down below whether you're concerned about these delisting fears and if this video helped you address some of that. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to invest positively. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.